So, and of course, these kids go watch movies about discrimination in the 40s and 50s and stuff and baseball, and it becomes their identity. They relive football players and baseball players having racist things said to them. They relive that. They go out. And then if you don't like the ref's call, you just attack them. Could be called attempted murder. Somebody's not wearing pads to hit them in the kidneys full on with your helmet. And, the, and even the coach is defending it. This is just the breakdown of society, total thug society. And then meanwhile, the new James Bond is going to be politically correct. And the new James Bond movie will be the one coming up next. And in new novels will be lectured by women on how being a man is bad. This is all coming up. Well, the, the Ayatollah Khomeini says Israel won't survive the next 25 years. And it burns. Taking to Twitter, Iranian leader says Zionists won't find serenity until destruction calls U.S. Great, great Satan and rejects any talks with Washington beyond the nuke deal. So that is Iran's response to the West trying to work with them. And you got to ask, what is Obama's real end game here? And I don't want to attack Iran. I don't want to destabilize Syria to try to bring down Iran. I don't want to have war with Iran. I want prosperity for the Persian people. Upwards of 75% in international polls don't like the ruling Shiite rulers. But Saudi Arabia is the majority of Islam. It controls Mecca. It controls the Wahhabist sect that is taking over Sunni religion that's very diverse and is radicalizing Islam. It is the big threat. So I wonder why Iran plays into the globalist program of acting like villains. Shiites are 19% of Islam. They are not aggressively expanding. They do not generally launch terror attacks in the West. They do run real paramilitary operations, though, against Western forces in the Middle East. But they do have real sleeper cells all over the West of serious military operatives who will take action if there's a war with Iran. And then Saudi Arabia is going to hit them with nukes along with Israel. So there's no winner in any of this. And if you collapse the Middle East further, you're going to have even more refugees pouring into Europe. And now Paul Watson has the article up on Infowars.com. It's incredible. Image after image showing the jihadist by name on their own Facebook pages showing what men they are. Now as refugees holding up their machine guns, their 50 cals, their rocket launchers, now on the streets of Europe, pouring in. And Al-Qaeda and ISIS said three months ago, two months ago, a month ago, we're going to hit you with 500,000 refugees in the next few months, and we're going to flood in with our operatives, and we're going to hit you. And now the attacks have started, and if you try to go out and protest it, you're in a town of 1,000 Germans, 2,000 illegals show up one week, you are arrested. And then Donald Trump comes out and says, we've got to take the Syrian refugees. Most of these people aren't even Syrian. They're Pakistani, they're Afghan, that's in the news today. And they're just showing up. They're North African, you name it. No one else would take these people but our sick ruling class that can't wait for the class warfare and all the weird, and, and oh, we've got to adopt for their culture under political correctness German women are being told, don't wear short skirts now. It offends the Muslims. Well, I mean, I, I don't want to offend you. You've got your life. I've got mine. And I'll live how I want to. But see, not a word from the feminist because they're not feminists. They're sick freaks that want to go in a barber shop with just regular schmoes in Pittsburgh and go, give me a haircut. Do my hair in curlers. Man, we don't do women's hair. We don't have the equipment. Oh, really? You're a sexist? No. Uh, we're a barber shop. We cut men's hair. I'm going to fine you. I'm going to the EEOC. Boom, you're fined.
But, oh, we're not going to search the headdresses of the Islamicist. It's because Westerners are tolerant. We're not just tolerant of third world Stone Age culture coming in and dominating us because we have no culture. I mean, I watch these illegals. We're, we're tolerant of the hen-pecking government that wants to end masculinity because it's something that might stand up to them. I mean, this is a full-on war. And I just look at the women of the West that have bought into all this hype and the men that have done it. They're all alone, unhappy. By the time they're 35, 40, they're desperate. There are no men around. The, I mean, so many women by 35, they're like, I was a big feminist. I didn't want a man that wore the pants. I didn't want, now I do. Where are they? I want one. Oh, oh, oh. And, and there's all these guys trying to act like trendies and metrosexuals, thinking they can get women that way. You act like a real man. You'll have women climbing over themselves, no matter even how you look. You see these guys that get it with their pot bellies and their wife beaters on. They're treating their wife or their girlfriend nice, but, you know, they're the boss. When it comes to many issues, the women eat it up because it's what humans do. But don't worry. You want the state to be your husband? He'll give you cancer viruses and GMO. Coming up, Ted Nugent is coming on. Verizon has dropped Sportsman Channel, one of the most popular channels they had. And basically what's happening is they're phasing it out because they're anti-gun. Just like I have the London Telegraph here with the owners of the franchise of Ian Fleming's character, James Bond, saying he's misogynistic, he's bad, and the new James Bond in the future, not this next movie, but after that, in novels and in film, is going to be politically correct. And they actually say here in the article... A cast of characters will point out the error of his chauvinistic ways, including messages about smoking causing cancer, women who give him a run for his money, and an outspoken gay friend. And the point is, it's a directive. It's everything. From your five-year-olds being taught how to be cross-dressers to women in frontline combat to estrogen mimickers in the food to being fined for being discriminatory because a barber shop doesn't cut women's hair. It, it, I mean, it's like walking in and saying, I want you to color my hair or I want you to, to, to bleach my hair. And they said, lady, we don't do that. We just cut hair. We got razors. We got clippers. We got scissors. That's it. And the guys interviewed saying, I guess I'll get the equipment. We don't really have women come in here, but okay. He said, I respect the law. I'll pay the fine. Isn't even going to fight back against it. See, it's that attitude of rolling over. Are you going to support the law if they say black people are slaves again? I mean, that's not going to happen, but that was a law. Are you going to support the law that they can sterilize you if you make a C-? minus? That was the law until the 30s, late 30s. Are you going to support the law if they ban alcohol again? The law is just a law that people make. And folks don't even fight back against these laws if they're unconstitutional. They just say, oh, right. Well, I didn't mean anything. I mean, I just told her we don't do women's hair. I don't know how. I've been cutting women, men's hair for decades. Uh, uh, okay, I'll do what you say. Good. I just came in here and pecked on some men. This bastion of male chauvinist in here. No, it's men that want to whip in like they did since they were kids, and get your hair cut in 10 or 15 minutes and not have to wait. Or you show up and the guy that's going to cut your hair is doing some woman's hair, and he's 30 minutes behind. They're called barber shops. Women don't go to them. Women want their hair done more fancy, unless they're Rachel Maddow. I guess she might go to the barber shop. Who cares? Let her. Janet Reno, barber shop. Hillary Clinton, barbershop. Hell, I'd go into the barbershop. Hillary's there like, hey, Sam, how you doing? Hey, Bob, hey, Hillary. Of course, Hillary wouldn't want to work at a barbershop because there's no women in there. And I get it. Hillary, I like women too. <laughs> the difference is I don't want to be forced to adopt your entire culture because you want to dominate me culturally and lecture me all day. So we've got 
Ted Nugent joining us, and then Carl Pittman running for sheriff in Harris County, where we saw the police officers, sheriff's deputy executed. He's running down there, and he's a decorated Marine and uh, police officer, sheriff's deputy, and he's worked all over the country, and he's got the endorsement of the Constitutional Association and, of course, uh, help promote and push and launch the international career now of Sheriff uh, Clark in Milwaukee, and they're behind Carl Pittman. He was on last week with uh, Joe Biggs and Jakari Jackson, really impressive type of guy. I mean, he's also got Sheriff Joe Arpaio's endorsement, and he says, simple, he's not left or right, he's a constitutionalist, and he will uphold the Constitution, period. It's not about being black or white, it's about being a constitutionalist. And I'll vote for anybody. I don't care what color you are. It's such an insult to have to even say, you know, I'll vote for somebody no matter what color they are if they stand for the freedom. Well, of course I would. But see, with the Democrats more and more, they vote racially. That's how they're branding all of it because they can look at the demographic. And just like the Democrats could win back when the country was majority white, so they were the party of the Klan then, as soon as the Republicans passed the Civil Rights Act, they then flip sides. And now they've turned the minority coalitions basically into black and Hispanic Ku Klux Klan type rhetoric organizations. So Carl Pittman's going to be in studio coming up here from H-Town up to, up to the ATX, Austin, Texas. So we look forward to that. Both guests amazing today. I want to get into the incredible news on the flotillas uh, hitting Europe. I want to get more into political correctness. I want to get into the World Bank and their announcements there. All of this is coming up. But first, Knockout is back. If you want a product that has 10 known ingredients that naturally get your body to relax, your brain to relax, so you get deep, restful sleep, Knockout's it. We had an introductory shipment in of this product we developed over the last few years and it sold out in four days so we put in a giant order of it so we should have enough for a few months hopefully it's in l-theanine hops flower extract lemon balm extract valerian root extract chamomile flower extract l-tryptophan extract melatonin and more all organic all the natural sources it's the same price as leading brands of melatonin that are three milligrams a piece it has three milligram, the standard recommended dose for an adult, and it's the same price, but it has its big caplets because it's got the GABA, the L-theanine, the hops flower, all the stuff I just mentioned in it. It's got a big dose of valerian roof, 30 milligrams. So it would probably cost $50 to take all this as separate pills. It's $19.95. And... It's not like you're going to run off the road when you take this like sleeping pills. You take one or two of these, and it just is really clean, restful sleep is what the reviews are. It's what I've experienced, and it just synergistically puts everything in there. It puts the precursor natural compounds in that break down into melatonin. So it's not just melatonin. It's got the stuff that's in turkey and in red meat, but high levels are in turkey, the L-tryptophan, that then breaks down into that so your body even absorbs that differently so it hits you at both angles it, it basically hits you from all angles uh and i got one bottle of it it sold out in three four days i wanted more didn't have it this went home with me last night i took two bottles home and i'm taking it uh and i'm also giving it to my children when i'm stupid enough to give them sugar late at night or they're all jacked up and it certainly helps them sleep it's hard to get them up at 6 30 in the morning when they've gone to bed at you know, 8.30 the night before when I give them this. If not, sometimes they're up in the middle of the night. You know how kids are, especially when they're excited about the school year starting or whatever the case may be. That product's back. We will sell out of Liver Shield. We're trying to get more of it in. You can do the whole liver gallbladder cleanse. That detail is at InfoWarsLife.com. Got the Oxy Powder, all the rest of it that goes together discounted. Even though that's going to sell out in the next day or two, we do have it discounted uh, with the Oxy Powder, InfoWarsLife.com or 888-253-3139. And we do have uh, the deep cleanse for the whole body with the zeolites and everything else that's got in it to pull out the toxins from the body.